got another past exam question for the redox titrations topic, so we're up to number 11 now. So this question covers things like reactions of acids, the iodine thiosulfate titration, and obviously there's a calculation alongside that, and it also asks some practical skills questions. I hope you enjoy the video, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you subscribe and pop a comment in the comment section, and maybe let me know any topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So part A, so we're focusing on step one. So step one, warm nitric acid is added to the ore. The ore contains a copper two compound and it forms copper two nitrate. We're also told here that bubbles of gas were observed. So the copper compound, the copper two compound in the ore is gonna be copper two carbonate, which has the formula CuCO3. So we'll just write the equation now, which looks like that. Moving on to part B now, so we've got to write now an equation with state symbols for the reaction taking place in step three. So what's happening in step three? They're adding an excess of aqueous potassium iodide, obviously to the filtrate, which is the purified copper two nitrate solution. And we're told a precipitate of copper one iodide and a solution of iodine forms. So the first thing we're gonna do is write the full equation and then we'll get it to the ion equation from that. Okay, so this is not the final answer, remember, it's the full equation. I've got the state symbols in, so we're gonna start looking at what we can cancel now. So we've got two aqueous potassium ions on the left. We've got two on the right, so they'll cancel. What else have we got? We've got two aqueous iodide ions on the left, but we haven't got any of those on the right, so that's got to stay. What else have we got? We've got Cu2 plus aqueous. Well, we've got copper one ions here, and they're sort of locked up in this solid, so we can't cancel those. We've got two aqueous nitrate ions, and we've also got that on the right as well, so they're gonna cancel. So the final answer is kind of there already, but I'll just tidy it up to make it a bit more clear for you. So that's it there. Moving on to step four, we've got a suggested suitable indicator for the titration and the color change at the end point. You'll notice I've highlighted the iodine, the aqueous iodine in brown. That's because it is brown. So as it reacts with the thiosulfate from the burette, it forms two colorless um, products, two colorless solutions. So basically this gets less and less brown. It starts kind of looking yellow, um, but obviously it's very difficult to see when the yellow becomes clear, colorless. So towards the end point, you add starch indicator and this will go, if there's any iodine left, it goes with a strong blue-black colour. And then when the final drop of iodine's been reacted, it'll go from blue-black to colourless. Moving on to part D now, so I've got my usual visualisation of the steps. So I'll quickly run through that. So they've added excess nitric acid to 2.5 grams of the ore. Remember the ore contains that copper 2 carbonate. So once that's happened, we're gonna have aqueous copper two plus ions, excess acid we're told, and some impurities. Unreacted rock, I think it says, yeah, it does there. So it's filtered and neutralized. So all we've got left now in this beaker is aqueous copper two plus ions. They've then added the excess potassium iodide and it's generated that brown iodine solution and the solid um, CUI, which we had to write the equation for just a minute ago. And then they've titrated that with 0.02 moles per decimeter cubed sodium thiosulfate solution. And the titra was 26.55 cm cubed. And there's the equation needed for that. Okay, so the first thing we can calculate is the moles of thiosulfate used in that titra. So concentration times volume, remember the volume's got to be in decimeters cubed, 5.31 times 10 to the minus 4. So the next thing I'm going to do is use this ratio here. So it's a two to one ratio, thiosulfate to iodine. So the moles of iodine is coming out at 2.655 times 10 to the minus four. So you can see I've copied and pasted the equation we've just written there because we're now interested in this ratio, the iodine to copper two plus. So the iodine that was generated in this reaction is that. So that 2.655 times 10 to the minus four is the moles of this here. 
So then we apply this ratio. So basically we're doubling it back and we're going to get that again. Now some of you might be thinking that was a bit of an unnecessary step because they've ended up being the same. But I always like to explain where it comes from. So now we've got the moles of copper 2 plus. We can say that the moles of copper is going to be the same. Now we know the moles of copper. We can work out the mass of copper, moles times MR. And now we're in a position to calculate the percentage by mass of copper in the ore. So that's how many grams of copper were in that 2.5 grams. So that's just the mass of copper divided by the mass of the ore multiplied by 100. So we're getting 1.35% to three significant figures, which would be an appropriate number for this question. Moving on to the sort of practical skills types questions for part E. So I've gone back to my diagram and we're looking at this question here. The potassium iodide was not in excess in step three. What's going to happen to that um, percentage copper by mass answer? So if we we'll focus on here, this part here, so if the Ki isn't in excess, then you're not going to get as much iodine formed, which means your titer is going to be smaller, and therefore your final answer for the percentage by mass of copper would be less. So I'll just read through my answer in case you can't read my scribble. So I'm saying not all the copper 2 plus would react if the Ki wasn't in excess. So less moles of iodine would form, the titer is going to be less, so the percentage copper would be less. And the next part, the burette readings were read from the top of the meniscus in, in step four in the titration. So you're meant to go from the base of the meniscus, um, but if you're consistent where you read the meniscus from, the difference is still the same. So if you go top of the meniscus at the start of the titration, top of the meniscus at the end of the titration, the difference is still the same as if you went from the bottom both times. So I'm just saying something like this, no change in percentage copper as the titras are measured by difference. And for the final part of the question where the student uses 25 grams rather than 2.5 grams, what other measures or what other changes could they make to the uh, method to improve their answer, the accuracy of their answer? So I've just copied out the uh, method again. So the first thing we're going to see is they obviously haven't done repeated titrations and taken the mean of the concordant results. They've literally just done the experiment and done one titration. So that's the first thing I would say. And the other thing you could say is in the original method, you can see 2.50 grams. So they've used a two decimal place balance there. And in the last, this last question we're dealing with now, it says 25.00 grams. Again, that's two decimal places. So the obvious thing to say is use a more accurate balance, for example, um, a three decimal place balance to reduce the balance percentage error. So there's my answers. The student could repeat the titration, take the mean of the concordant results. The student could use a three decimal place balance to reduce the balance percentage error. Now there were a couple of other things you could have said. You could have talked about the concentration of the thiosulfate being lower so if you had a lower concentration of thiosulfate, that would increase the titer, which would then reduce the percentage error of the larger titer. Or you could even argue use a higher concentration of thiosulfate so you don't have to keep refilling the burette. But I would have gone for the two that I've actually put down.